I think that it deals with um, materialism and I believe that people are well informed about what is happening in Africa, about water scarcity and all that and the representation of that plastic jerry cans because it's identify water shortage, you know, and I think that I've had a couple of shows in the UK and I believe that there are a lot of people who are seen the work and have an idea and I think um, especially with this trip it's very more effective because uh, it's, it's a presentation and which actually having the physical object in this space as well where people are able to help you know work on the process and I think that is um, for me I'm, I'm interested in like the cultural aspect of it and how people perceive that in the, within their space because it's 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 a very symbolic object back in ghana that we need to survive every single time yeah. whereby in the uk it is a representation of an art material or like a cultural thing of of where i'm coming from i mean growing up with with this plastic gun it represents a problem for me because it's used for water storage and as a kid i have to carry it like a kilometer away to the fountain and all that so for me it has always been a problem for me you know by growing up and you know moving into different spaces i realized that it's available materials that i can work with over time as an artist and i begin to use them as a, as a canvas piece you know put them together mm -hmm. like a puzzle and work like make portrait of them and, and i begin to realize that it's i have to research the background of that because we are consuming so much and i realized that storage was becoming a problem you know so I begin to look at its migration background, which is originally used for cooking oil, you know, like transporting cooking oil for the yeah. West. And oil is a food, so obviously we need it. But then we realize that it's creating a lot of environmental, like hygienic situations where we store water in them. And after a period of time, it gets contaminated. And also looking at that kind of like uh, being part of architecture, kind of like deforms our architecture in a way because every individual has about 10 or 20 gallons and one gallon is like a 20 liters or 25 liters so imagine that you know invade your space you know i begin to you know pay attention closely to the objects and its functionality and i realized that even cutting them will reduce the volume and i can still manipulate the consumption yeah you know? i mean the work has gone far beyond environmental it's now those narrative of migration through you know the context of africa and europe you know so though it started like environmental eco-friendly but now it's more beyond that like defining narrative through materialism and i think that that has really brought my attention into different kind of like engagement yeah. globally yeah i mean obviously growing up in 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 in, in a very i mean educated space we are aware of environmental issues as well as you know but making it very effectively through an artistic approach you know that has been something that um i'm looking for it and i've managed you know to change people's perception about that object you know like yeah it represents it causes a lot of environmental hazards and environmental degradations so what is how do we transport that back to where it comes from you know it's a way of trading back to the west what they left behind mm. and that there will benefit the continent as well as the country yeah i think i'm interested in like cultural engagement as well as educational engagement with with brighton and i think that it will enforce my narrative to be more broad in a way that Afro-Galonism could be a, a, um, a core subject to study, you know, like looking at aspect, how do we develop this idea? You know, it's basically an idea of transformation of objects into more valuable, you know, commodity. Yeah. I think realizing the potentials of availability of that plastic and how we can kind of like strategize the use of it, you know, but like building a very functional um, value commodity that will bring people's attention to, to for them to use their own ways mm. to create something you know and i think that it has to be like a national symbolic identity of whatever each country can create from their waste i think uh, being an artist itself is a responsibility you know and you can you can't stop taking your responsibility it has to be like till you are no more 
you know so i think that it's it's a very bold step and um, for artists to although it's very challenging because most of the time you execute ideas without any fundings mm -hmm. but first you have to make a statement and then that's where people who adapt you know whatever you come out with and that's where people will be interested in and supporting or funding your projects and mm -hmm. i think that it's I mean, for me, I think art is something that I can't live without. You know, it's it's how I think, it's how I function as a human being, of taking advantage of available materials or available space that I, I, I come by. Yeah.